Rex, run back inside and make sure we didn't forget anything. Mom says. I say, we didn't. Just do it. The edge of her voice is sharp as a knife. Mom goes back to arguing with Sam about who's going to drive to our new place. If I were old enough to drive, I'd take my brother and drive away. I'd never look back. Walking up to the old apartment, I freeze on the last stair. I always do that. It's like this step where I take a sec to catch my breath. Before I go inside. Before I face Mom and Sam and whatever mood they're in. The breezeway is all gray, peeling paint, spider webs, the smell of must and mold. The area feels tight, claustrophobic, like a dark cave leading to a darker place. I never liked it here. Stepping inside, I realize it's for the last time. Two years here. Now it's empty, like a place from a dream. Like I know it, but I don't. But I do know it. All of it. I can't forget. In the living room, there's a crater where you can see the apartment's insides, drywall and wood beams. Folks who came over always asked, is that a rug on the wall? They didn't know it covered up a hole the size of my mom's body, from where she'd been thrown into the wall like an asteroid into the moon. The kitchen cabinets are bare, except an army of ants searching for leftovers. Pressed into the dining area carpet is a big X from the table. Tiny bits of broken brown and emerald glass are tucked, hidden away in the corners and carpet seams. When they catch the light just so, they remind me of pirate jewels instead of shards from broken beer bottles. The hall is empty, but it was always empty, except for four scratches on either side, from when Mom clawed to stop herself as Sam dragged her by one leg into their bedroom to continue a fight behind a closed door. We all shared one bathroom. It's empty now, except stray hairs and soap crud. Mom and Sam's bedroom is empty too, as though no soul ever slept there.